Today I wanted to talk about the high temperatures, at least I consider them high temperatures, that we see with these more modern engines on these Cummins and all, all of the trucks for that matter, and why we're seeing that. And I think I've got some pretty good explanations. i got a couple of charts, but I wanted to show you this, and uh, I think you'll find it interesting. I definitely do. So we're tooling along here in Texas somewhere. It's relatively flat land, no, no hills to speak of, just pretty much basic running steady, 65 miles an hour, as you can see there. That all temperature is about 228 degrees, and the coolant is 217, which is right about where your fan cycles on. I don't particularly like to see my fan cycling on when I'm doing 65 miles an hour. In fact, that's usually the point where I start backing off and keeping that coolant temperature down below the point where that fan cycles. Just a personal thing, I don't like it. I feel like it's loading up that fan too much. Now this video is not going to be a rant about all the bad things about the EGR valve. I think we all know what they are. In fact, Cummins has developed an emission system that does all the after treatment after downstream of the engine. So it eliminates the EGR valve and a lot of other different things. I don't know much about it. It would be a wonderful thing to see it utilized in the pickup trucks, but I think the package is just so huge that they can only use them in, you know, large industrial engines right now. But I think down the road that's coming, hopefully. Recycling exhaust gas has one single purpose, and that's to lower the combustion temperature, which in effect reduces the nitrogen oxide emissions, period. Unfortunately, we pay a heavy price for that, but the diesel industry was about to have to leave the United States when the EPA decided that they were going to pass these more stringent rules on soot emission and, and nitrogen oxide. So these companies came up with this solution, basically had to jump through their ass to do it. But the EGR valve on diesels has been around since I think 2004, which does include the 5.9, some of them. If you're fortunate enough to have one pre-2004 or pre-EGR, you're a very lucky person, hang on to it. I had one, and I loved it, and I wish I still had it. 175 horsepower and 425 foot-pounds of torque. But man, would it would pull, and I had a much bigger trailer then. But the industry has really stepped up in the last few years. In fact, they continue to improve. And we're using less and less EGR all the time. As well as the new oils that have been produced to handle the soot that's floating around in the oil. Because as we know, that's you know a major cause of wear. It's an abrasive. And personally, that's why I believe in changing my oil sooner rather than later. So back on topic. Why do these EGR equipped engines run so much hotter than the previous non-EGR? And also why we see these relatively high engine operating temperatures under moderate loads. And these temperatures are not excessive. They're just higher than the pre-EGR engines ran. And also as far as oils, well with these kind of temperatures here, 228, that's okay for dyno oil, but if I did this reg regularly, I would definitely run synthetic oil. I w that, that would be my recommendation. Dyno oil is good, fine for 230, 240, but anything above that, you're getting into never, never land, I think. I just can't justify it because of the low mileage that I generally run and a lot of grocery getting and whatnot, and don't normally run into this kind of stuff. So let's take a look at this first chart. And I know it looks pretty much of a mess, but just concentrate on this little area right here, which is actually the truck was in an active regen, and I'll show you that on the next chart. But the point of this video is, this is the EGR valve, this red stuff here, and it's a percentage of how much it's open or closed. And this coincides exactly with my edge insight that I had, which is about 70% maximum open is all it'll do. Zero is completely closed. So when you're in a regen, the EGR valve goes to zero. And that's why I'm able to measure these temperatures. So as you can see, 
before the regen starts, our inlet air temperature, which is uh, called the IAT sensor, it's sitting right on the manifold. It's the last stop before the air goes into the cylinders. And it's uh, 149 degrees. And then when the, when the regen starts, it drops to 114.8. And also, by the way, the ambient temperature, as I mentioned earlier, or maybe I didn't, is 93 degrees. Fairly warm. Uh, the regen time was 18 minutes, roughly, here. And that was a 5.1 hour log, taking samples at one every second. And all of these graphs are the same time interval, even though I don't have it down here. Five hours and same same graph, really, just different, looking at different things. But you can see up here where the region temperature, that's the outlet of the DPF that I'm looking at right there. It's called EGT3. And on my truck, it usually gets up to about 1050, maybe 1100, but I think 1050 is... When I see that, I know it's probably getting ready to max out. And the uh, inlet air temperature, you can see, look like it's running in the 140s. And then when that EGR valve closes, boy, it drops like a brick. On this one, you can clearly see my fuel stops because look at the, the dip in the temperature. Went way down here while I'm idling, fueling up. Looks like probably three different or four different fuel stops but this is the significant part of this graph you can pretty much ignore the rest of it and this last one is same interval but I added in coolant temperature versus the intake air temperature and you can see as a little snapshot that I had earlier of my gauge that we were running about 217 and when we went into the active region, that coolant temperature dropped down to 192. And that to me is amazing. And as mentioned before, the intake air temperature went from 147 down to 114. So why do I dwell on this intake air temperature so much? Well, it's because we know that cold air can be compressed more. It contains more oxygen. So it makes the engine capable of making more horsepower and thus a more efficient running engine. But that's why we get into a little conflict with the purpose of the EGR. As you can see, the EGR is adding more heat to the intake air and although it's adding more heat, it's reducing the temperature of the combustion which is its sole purpose to reduce the NOx. So we run in our boosted air through the intercooler we're running our EGR through the EGR cooler, all for the purpose of cooling this air, but never to the point that it would be without the EGR. So this is the challenge of trying to make an engine run efficiently when you're pumping hot, inert, dry gas into the cylinder with literally no oxygen or very little. So you can see by this chart that without the EGR, that coolant temperature would be 192 instead of 217. Now you say, that's all well and good, but what's making my coolant temperature so much hotter and my oil temperature so much hotter? Well, let's have the drum roll, because here's the reason why. So yeah, it's the EGR cooler, primarily. You've got hot exhaust gas coming right off the exhaust manifold, and it's being cooled by coolant. So you're basically heating up your coolant with EGR gas and you know the high temperatures of the exhaust manifold and the same thing with the oil. The oil cooler is cooled by coolant so your oil temperature goes up you know equivalent. Usually probably about 10 degrees higher than your coolant temperature. It's really remarkable how well it works. It's taking the exhaust gas at what 800 to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, running it through that cooler and dropping it down to, oh, say, 240 or so. By the time it mixes with the boost air and whatnot, you're going into the engine about 140-something degrees. That also shows you that you don't have a whole lot of EGR gas, because obviously 
this cool as well as its work, and it could never cool large volumes of EGR. It's just too hot. On 2013 on up, there's no maintenance on the EGR cooler like they used to be, or the EGR valve. So this situation is getting better. Not that it's bad, but it's just uh, is what it is. Anyway, that's going to do it for us, guys. I appreciate you guys watching my video. Press like, if you will. I think it has something to do with the algorithms. I don't know anything about that. But until next time, thank you and adios.